Next up, we're looking at quadratic inequalities, which I know is in the GCSE, but I think it's one of the more challenging parts that is there. So first of all, if we're going to try and solve this um, quadratic inequality, it says step one, get zero on one side. We've already got that done. Step two, factorize or solve, OK, because you may not be able to factorize. You could use the calculator to do this as well. And then it says to sketch and reason. So I'm actually going to solve the equation on my calculator. I'm going to do it with 1, 2 and minus 15. And this will solve the solutions are that x equals 3 and x is equal to minus 5 for this equation. And then the third bit says sketch and reason. So I'm going to just draw a really simple sketch. I'm not going to do um, all of the details that we have done previously. We know that it crosses at 3 and minus 5. And the quadratic is going to be some kind of shape like this. We're not going to worry about it too much. And we are interested when the graph, when the function is bigger than zero. Well, let's go to this line that we've got here. That's going to be the zero line. Anything above here is greater than zero. Anything below here is when it is less than zero, because we know that obviously positive numbers are at the top and negative numbers are at the bottom. So when is this graph greater than zero? Well, this graph is greater than zero here and here, which corresponds to these parts for the x values. It corresponds to all of these and all of these that we have. So this graph is greater than zero when x is greater than three, or when x is less than minus 5. But I want to put this into set notation. So I'm going to say x such that x is greater than 3, or x such that x is less than minus 5. So it's either two sides that we've got here when it's greater than 0. And if it was when it was less than 0, it would be this inside range, because that would correspond to this part of the graph that we've got here, OK? I'm just going to point this one more time. These branches correspond to these bits here, OK? Let's try another one. This time, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 15. It's the same equation. x squared plus 2x minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. So I would put it in my calculator, and I would know that x is 3 and x is minus 5. And I'm going to draw that sketch. It's going to be the same one as before. says minus 5 and there's 3. We said everything above was when it's bigger than 0 and everything below is when it's less than 0. So this time the graph we want it to be less than or equal to 0. So it's this section here which will correspond to these x values that we have running along this middle bit. So by doing the sketch we can see pretty easily that x is going to be in between minus 5 and 3. But hopefully you've noticed that it could also have been equal, so I'm allowed to put those or equal to signs in as well. So in set notation, it will be x such that x is in between minus 5 and 3. You could also just substitute in a value to check that you've got it the right way around. So for example, if x is 0, that's clearly between minus 5 and 3. If I substituted 0 in here, I would get minus 15 is less than or equal to 0. So it's true. It does work. OK, so there's a couple more that we're going to have a look at. These ones require a little bit of extra work because we don't have them with the zero on one side. So I'm going to have x squared plus 5x plus 4 is greater than or equal to zero. And then I'm going to use my calculator. So I've got 1, 5 and 4 as my coefficients, which tells me it crosses at minus 1 and minus 4. So I'm going to draw a quick sketch here, minus 1 and minus 4. It's not going to be like the full sketches we've done before. And I want the graph. These are greater than 0 and these are less than 0. I want it to be when it is greater than 0. So that is this bit of the branch and this bit of the branch, which will correspond to all of these x values and all of these x values here. So it looks like x can be greater than or equal to minus 1. And it looks like x can be less than or equal to minus 4. 
So I'm going to just put that into set notation, x such that x is greater than or equal to minus 1, or x such that x is less than or equal to minus 4. Okay, next one that we've got here, we want to solve x squared being less than 9. So again, I'm going to make it to 0. Solving this equation, well, it's pretty obvious what your solutions are going to be. You're going to have plus and minus 3 for this one. So we know it's going to be crossing at 3 and at minus 3. And we're going to draw a quick sketch. And there's minus 3 and there's 3. Remember, everything up here is greater than 0. Everything down here is less than 0. So we want it to be less than 0, which is going to correspond to this part of the graph that's less than 0. And the x values that give you that are in between 3 and minus 3. So it's going to be between 3 and minus 3. And putting that in set notation, it is going to be x such that x is between 3 and minus 3. OK, we're going to try some trickier kind of exam question here. So we've got a linear, a quadratic, and then a combination. Right, part A of the question. Let's just solve this one. So we have 3x minus 2 less than 8 minus 2x. So I'm going to expand. I'm going to add the 2x. And then I'm going to add on the 6 here so that I've got 14. And then I'm going to divide the 14 by 5 so that I have that x is less than or equal to 14 over 5. So that's the first bit of the question. It might be helpful to think that 14 over 5 is 2.8. And then part B of the question, well, it doesn't really um, look like it needs expanding because actually I think I can just solve this one straight away. So from the first bracket, either 2x minus 7 is equal to 0 so x is equal to 7 over 2. And from the second bracket, 1 plus x is equal to 0. So x is equal to minus 1. So that means when I draw the sketch of this graph, it is either going to be crossing at minus 1 or 7 over 2. There's minus 1, there's 7 over 2. And remember, the bit going above is greater than 0. The bit going below is less than 0. So the thing I'm interested in is when it is less than zero, which is this section. And so it's this middle bit. This middle bit is that x is in between 7 over 2 and minus 1. Now remember, 7 over 2 is 3.5. So we now, for the last part of the question, need to combine these two inequalities that we've got. We need to combine this bit that we've got here, and we need to combine this bit that we've got here. Well, this one is more restricted at the top end. It's saying that it has to be less than 2.8. This one says it has to be less than 3.5. So when I combine them, I'm actually going to say it has to be less than 2.8 or 14 over 5. And we still have the restriction at the bottom end that it has to be less than minus 1. I'm going to finish off just by putting it in set notation so that x is a number such that it is between minus 1 and 14 over 5. OK. Let's just check we've got this right. So we've got x is less than 2 over 8. We've got that it's in between minus 1 and 7 over 2, and in between minus 1 and 2.8 that we've got there for that question. We're going to do one more exam style question on this, and then you're going to have a practice on exercise 3e. So given that the equation 2qx squared plus qx minus 1 equals 0, where q is a constant, has no real roots, first of all, we need to show that that's true, and then we need to do a set of possible values of q. Well, this isn't just going to be about quadratic inequalities anymore. You're going to have to start using things from other topics as well. If something has no real roots, you know that the discriminant is going to be less than 0. So let's have a look at this equation that we've got up here. My value of a is 2q, my value of b is q, and my value of c is minus 1. And I know that b squared minus 4ac is going to be less than 0. So I'm going to start substituting those things in. So b squared will be q squared. And then I've got minus 4 times a times c is less than 0. 
So that is q squared, while the minus 4 times the minus 1 is going to be a plus, and 4 times 2 is going to be 8. So we get q squared plus 8q is greater than 0. Ah, and that was the thing it wanted us to show that was true for part A of the question. So sometimes if you're not sure what to do, just have a look at the information they've given you, think about what else that tells you, and somehow you'll end up at that answer. Part B of the question says find the set of possible values of Q and when it says set really we should be giving our answer in set notation. So although it's a Q rather than X we've got here it's still going to follow that same pattern. I mean it's pretty obvious what the solutions are going to be here but if you wanted to you could put them in your calculator and you will come up with the values of Q are 0 and minus 8 when you solve that quadratic. So quick sketch, you've got minus 8 and you've got 0. The quadratic is this way around like this, and it wants us to say that it is less than 0. So the section where it is less than 0 is this part of the graph, where it's in between minus 8 and 0. So this means that q is in between minus 8 and 0. And so it is q such that q is in between minus 8 and 0. That's what it would be in set notation then. Quick word of warning before you do exercise 3e. If you ever have a quadratic that is something like this, minus x squared plus 4x, I don't know, plus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. When you do the sketch of it, because it is a negative that you've got here, make sure that you're doing the sketch the other way around so that you can see exactly what's happening. OK, so make sure that you do the sketch the correct way around. If it has a negative at the beginning, you still have to take into account the shape of the graph. So the shape is important. OK, have a go at exercise 3E and see how it goes.